Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first, thanks to RTD for organising this event. Uh, it's a very useful one for us. I'm Tom Howes in the Economic Analysis Unit of DG Energy. DG Energy is the Energy Department of the European Commission, um, which produces the legislative proposals related to energy policy on renewables or efficiency or market liberalisation. Um, we work very closely with our other policy departments, particularly the Transport Department, DG Move, and the uh, Climate, Climate Action Department, DG Klima. Um, but today I'll talk about the, the, the range of the four, four aspects of, of modelling within our unit uh, and I'll, I'll run through those if I can work out the intelligence test of the device. Okay, yes, I'll use that. Um, this is uh, just a, a first glance at, at the suite of publications that we produce. I think it's probably all bedtime reading for all of you if you're familiar with European energy modelling. Um, it's the, the the, the, the core of our work uh, at the moment, it's um, the reports on, on energy trends and, uh, and then specific reports on policy analysis, on impact assessments and so on. And I'll just run through a bit of detail of, of this. So what do we do? Um, we, uh, we pride ourselves on having very strong uh, evidence-based, analytically-based policy development in the EU. We have a, a very rigorous regime of preparing impact assessments and evaluations. Uh, the mantra has always been evidence-based policy. And we think, at least in, within DG Energy, we, we, we take this very seriously and we have a, a robust approach to it all. We, we build up our models that to, on, on the basis of, of databases, and we'll be talking later about access to databases, uh, and, and, and building up the, the, the models that, uh, that you're all familiar with, to en ensure that we have a, a robust defense of why our policy proposals are uh, a net, in net a good thing. What, what, their, what their costs are for the, for the energy sector in particular, or for the economy overall, uh, what the different impacts are, be that uh, agriculturally, uh, climatically, environmentally, or socially. So that's the broad approach. Um, the core of most of our work starts with a business as usual, a reference scenario. You're familiar with this approach, you produce a, a business as usual and then develop a policy counterfactual, uh, and this is, this is the way we work. Um, this is the sort of thing we always flag up. We, we always have to explain to, to, to non-modellers that we are talking projections here. We're not trying to produce forecasts. Uh, and these are some of the ways we, we, we'll be, we build up this core business as usual approach. We, we consult widely with, with member states to get a feel for, for what their specific policies are so we can better represent national policies within our European model. Um, we consult widely with, with, with colleagues on, on building up uh, the technology costs behind uh, that, that go into the model um, and, and, and follow these steps. So it's a very rigorous, uh, quite a lengthy and intensive approach we take to setting up this, this baseline, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's proved useful. That work is, is fed into by a range of different models. Um, again, you're probably familiar with a lot of these. Uh, Primes is at the core of it. Uh, that feeds then into, into uh, macroeconomic results, uh, we get uh, environmental transport results, uh, specific models on, on biomass, specific models on, on the gas market. So again, we, we, you were talking of, Mark, of, of, of horses for courses. We, we bring a lot of the horses into the same stable to produce this, uh, this reference scenario. Um, and in essence for us today, what's useful for us is to get a picture of what's not currently in this stable and what are the other potential racehorses or cart horses out there uh, that it's useful to know about from a policy perspective to know what we can better, better model. Because as always, the, the model's good, uh, and so far as we've been building it up over the years, it's really the best that there is, but there's always room for improvement. And that's, for us, that's a, a very good reason for having this kind of networking event today. To, um, to, to finish on, 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 our, on our core, on the reference scenario, the, the other important aspect of, of modelling is actually using the results and presenting the results. And that, that's quite a, an intensive exercise. You, you said it's difficult, and I think I'm going to fail, it's difficult to, to do the 17-minute uh, uh, synthesis um, to take modelling results and put them into policy impact assessments or policy documents or even on a, on a, a graphic website. 
is, is quite a major exercise, but it's an important one if we're to, to use the, the results we, we have uh, in a policy context and in, in a very political context. So we've gone through a lot in, in recent years in terms of develop, developing a, um, hopefully a, a simple to understand user interface um, to present core results that come out of the, out of the analysis. Um, the most recent example of, of, of using all of this was in the impact assessment work we did for the uh, uh, Clean Energy for Europe package that, uh, adopted by the Commission last November. Um, the modelling fed into all of these proposals. Um, so that's, uh, again, more bedtime reading for you if you want to see where the fruits of all this modelling can end up. Another aspect I'll, I'll talk of is, is uh, well, sorry, this is just the, the, the way we've used the, the, the models. Again, to talk of our impact assessment approach, I don't know how familiar you are, whether you've, you've heard the scare stories of the impact assessment board that we have in the Commission, or the, what's now called the Regulatory Scrutiny Board. This is a, an independent board which judges our analysis and decides whether it's uh, adequate to defend the policy proposals that the Commission's putting forward. So it's become quite an uh, institutionalised regime um, and it's critical to our policy development. Um, but so far, with the results of, of the models that we've been using, we've actually been awarded uh, a, a quality stamp uh, and given as an example of best practice. So we're proud of our work um, thus far. Part of the work, I, I'll move on to a, a, a different aspect of the modelling that we have within the, within the unit. The, the core of it is based on the development of the reference scenario with the primes model uh, and the work associated with that and the policy scenarios, but we've been elaborating uh, a range of other models to supplement that core energy sectoral modelling. And the METIS model is uh, our newest edition, where we, we are developing, well, it's a different type of model looking at, at, at short-term detailed analysis of, of gas and electricity markets uh, and tell, being able to look at different aspects of policy. Um, we've been using this to explore the issues of uh, the impact of capacity mechanisms, the role of in specific interconnections and, and European infrastructure policy, so to look into certain more details of the energy sector that we haven't been able to look at before. So uh, this is a, a new addition to our, our suite. Um, since we, one of the themes of this workshop is, is talking about uh, transparency, this is, this is the model that we're developing together with Artelis, uh, and we're calling it an open book approach. You'll hear more about this tomorrow, but in essence, it's partly open source. The, the, the code and the core of it will be open source, uh, and the, 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 but the platform is not yet. So that's, um, but this is, again, we're, we're trying to develop uh, models and results which we use, but in the name of transparency, others can use and simulate and replicate our results, um, which is an important part of, of validating the whole policy analysis process. Um, results of this are already published, so uh, we have more bedtime reading for you. You don't need to sleep at all, really. Um, those are already on our, on our website. Another aspect to think of is the macroeconomic. Uh, we've, we have the detailed zoom in on electricity or gas markets and the details there. We have the sectoral analysis of the whole of the energy sector, but then that necessarily has to feed in to macroeconomic models to get the, the macroeconomic story. And there we've been using, by tradition, the, the E3ME and the, and the, the GEM E3 approaches to, to, to get a, a, a range of results to, to, to pick up the different schools of thought and the different implications that can occur at a macroeconomic macro level. Um, but as always, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's never going to be good enough. So we're actually doing some further work to improve the way the energy sector, the way innovation in the energy sector and the way financing in the energy sector is, is represented in economic modelling. We're not capturing and well enough at the moment the, the, the structural changes that can be generated through innovation uh, and in particular the macroeconomic implications of such structural changes. So that's something we're currently exploring and again you'll hear more about that, about that later, later on. Then last but not least we're working very closely with the JRC in building up their their uh, potential model of the energy system. Again, this is, this is to, to provide us with uh, a, a range of different results which can help us get a, a, a better feel for, for capturing the, the different ways of, of replicating the energy sector. 
so that we're not uh, we're not committed to giving one number. Even if our commissioners and and, uh, and ministers like us to give them the one number that answers everything, um, we as as analysts feel a bit reluctant to do that. So ranges uh, and reminders of uncertainty uh, of approach and, and methodological background are always important. So we are currently developing the potency model, or the JRC is developing the potency model, uh, and we're helping them do that. So. That's my quick run through. Um, just a, a last mention of other activities we do to generally improve the robustness of, of these models. We have a, an ongoing dialogue with member state governments, uh, with member states uh, economists, to ensure that we, we're capturing their views and, and their policy assumptions. Um, we have an international dialogue as well with, with the, the main uh, international institutions doing energy modelling. And of course, we're more than welcome to talk to everyone with an Horizon 2020 project, because the, the closer we can bring you guys uh, to a familiarity with what the policy needs are, the better our analysis, the better our modeling will be. So this kind of exchange is extremely useful for us to, to improve our stable of, of models, for you to have a better understanding of what the policy priorities are, uh, and to help us fill the gaps. So on that, I'll leave it. Not quite 17 minutes, sorry about that. Thank you very much. Uh, Please do stay up there. Sure. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. An uh, incredible job in not just keeping the time, but being under and so much information and great bedtime reading. So, uh, do we have some questions? Let's let's start off with three because I think there's been so the, one, two. Okay. Um, my name is Robbie Morrison. Uh, the state of um, data licensing lags uh, the state of um, code licensing by about 10 years. Um, what, uh, what work has been done on, on, on um, uh, open data licensing? It's a complex problem. Um, we, we, we have um, SQL queries looking at uh, relational databases and whether they're derived works and so on and so on. Thank you. Let's take the, uh, the, next, the next question as well. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Paul Dean, University College, Cork. Uh, Tom, uh, the, the Commission do not publish the detailed results of the mitigation scenarios um, for the, the, uh, the different strategies. How do we reconcile that with the Commission's ambition to be transparent and, and openness in science? Thank you. Yes, uh, I wouldn't be able to remember a third question, so thank you. Uh, um, so on, on, on databases and, and openness, um, it's, it's a thorny issue. We, um, we rely mostly on the JRC, I must say, in terms of building up our technology cost uh, databases, uh, together with the, the consultants who build the models themselves. Um, and I think it's something that is going to have to change soon. Um, I don't know if I can put the, the uh, burden on, on Andreas to, to talk a little bit about licensing, but uh, there, there is ongoing work in terms of exploring the, the, the nature and the specificity of licenses to work out what, uh, what we can finally release on a public platform and what we cannot. Um, but you're right to flag it as, as a critical issue, that the databases are uh, the, part of the, the, the core of the whole process. Um, so if there can be advances made there in, in improving the licensing regimes and, and the ability to, to put more of that out into the open, uh, the better. But um, I think that's, that's a useful uh, work stream to, to, to continue with. Uh, in terms of transparency and results, um, we've put up more data, released more data and more information on the runs the both the reference and the policy runs than we ever have before. Um, there's a wealth of it out there. Um, when we get requests, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, we're, we're going through seeing what we can comfortably release. The, the main constraint on our side is, is uh, robustness of, of the results and, and confidence that we've, we've gone through the validation exercise for every single part of it uh, to feel comfortable putting it out in the public domain. Um, separately, uh, in most cases when we're requested for data for analytical purposes, um, we can release the data. So I would, uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, un unashamed of, of the approach we take so far. I think we've, you can clearly see uh, a, a vast amount of more data is released these days than it was even five years ago. Um, 
and we I think there's been a, a, a change of mindset in the house and we're we're trying to be as as, as transparent as we can thank you very much um, uh, just a, a warm round of applause for, for Tom and thank you for